Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs and back to our JavaScript series. In this video, I just want to cover a couple of important things here with respect to Pyramid of Doom. And you must have heard about what is callback hell. We have already seen what do you mean by callbacks, what do you mean by promises, and uh, we have seen that how to create a callback function and then how exactly the promises or asynchronous operation works with the promises and the callback. So if you see this particular code, and can you see that there are so many async function that I'm calling in the nested form, that async function one is calling function two, then function three, then function four, and then keep going on. And then more and more nested callbacks that I have, if I want to write, I can write it here. So this is called pyramid of doom or callback hell. If you see this also that back to back callback function that I'm writing in the form of nested form here, same thing here also. You can see it here that floppy.load disk one, then prompt, please insert the disk number two. And then again, I'm calling another callback function with disk two. Please insert the disk number three, then disk number four, and then keep going on like this and keep loading the disk over here. Same thing. That's why this is called a callback hell. So whenever you see this particular format as a developer or as a JavaScript developer, there are many challenges that I have to face with respect to error handling, with respect to debugging, and it's not at all readable also that where exactly the bracket is getting closed or getting open and it's everything is available in the form of a nested form here. So this is called callback hell or in another term, we can say pyramid of doom also, you can say that. So these are the terms used to describe a situation in JavaScript where you have deeply nested callback within callbacks, making the code hard to read and so difficult to maintain. So how exactly it looks like? It looks like this, okay? So to improve this thing, JavaScript has introduced two things that we have already covered. The first thing they have introduced with respect to promises. They say that, okay, fine. You simply create a promise. It can be resolved or it can be rejected. And then once the promise is available, then you can write simple. Instead of writing the uh, nested callbacks, you can simply write then error or catch also, you can write it here. <laughs> For example, let's see, this is async function number one, and it's giving me some result, and then I'm passing this result, and I'm calling this particular async function number two, then function number three, and function number four. So if you see that, better readability with the promises, that is what I have written over here, right? Same thing that once the async function, it's returned with the multiple promise chaining that we have already seen in the previous chapters also, to make it more readability with the promises and with the callback function, with all the async and operations, then the JavaScript has introduced async and await concept. So this is one async function that I have created. And for every asynchronous function that you are calling, we have to use this await keyword. So practically I'll tell you what do you mean by async and await in the next chapter, in the next video, but try to understand that it is more readable as compared to the pyramid of doom or callback hell. So we should never write the code like this with the callback hell. We should always use in the form of promises a chaining or you can write in the form of async or await concept. We can use it here. So async is a keyword which is used for the asynchronous function and await is used for the internal steps and used for all the asynchronous operations. So what exactly it will do, this await will hold the operation for this particular line. And once this particular function is completed, then only it will move further. For example, this function is taking around, let's see, five seconds. So this line is taking around five seconds of time. It is actually waiting. And then once the result one is available, then it will call the second function. The second function is taking around 10 seconds. Once it takes 10 seconds are over, then it will go to the third function. So this is a better and much better way of handling the multiple asynchronous operations here and more and more readable code that we have written here like this. So these approaches flatten the code and improve the readabilities, making it easier to manage asynchronous operation and handle errors. So there are three major problems with this particular callback hell. People might ask at time of interview and we should never, why we should not write the code like this in the form of nested callback hell or pyramid of doom. What are the problems? First of all, readability. It is always challenging to follow the flow of the code and the indentation level also becoming overwhelming a return. And uh, it is so difficult to read also. So readability and indentation is so difficult to maintain here. Maybe some editor, they are not uh, supporting the indentation of the callback hell. Then it will be very, very difficult for me to 
uh, organize the code and read the code here. The second thing is the error handling. Handling error within the stru this structure can be error prone. You may need to add error callbacks to each nested function call. So I have uh, no idea that, okay, if function number three is giving me the error, then I have to add another uh, callback for the errors to handle that particular error while uh, checking the error handling. Third thing is that debugging. Debugging can be complicated because uh, the callback stack that you're writing, it becomes deep and more nested and making it hard to pinpoint the, where exactly the source of error, where exactly the error is coming from. So that's what the three major problems, the readability, error handling, and the debugging here. So that's what, to mitigate these issues, JavaScript has introduced promises, or you can say async and await. So this is just a small thing that I really wanted to cover before starting with the async and await concept. And then we will see how exactly async and await we have to write it over here. And what is the concept exactly behind that? I hope this is clear. Very famous interview question. Don't get confused. What do you mean by parameter of doom or callback head?